Okay, this is a completely blind playthrough of what's going to happen in Route E of Near Replicants. The 1.2247487139 full stop, full stop, full stop. I think I missed a full stop somewhere there. Um, I've been reliably informed that the divergence point is immediately after we defeat this boss. And yeah, I've done everything else. I've got all the other trophies. I've completed Route D, which I believe is a requirement. And something should happen once this boss goes down. To reiterate, I am looking at this completely and utterly blind. Except for that one time where I read the near wiki, which said that it had something to do with Kaine going to the forest of myth and chasing to the tree. And I reckon there's more than that, because I have seen Kira and Kyle's name in the credits, and they were not mentioned anywhere on the wiki page, so there's clearly something else happening here. But really, I don't know if we're just going to go through known territory, whether we get magically teleported into another game. I've got no idea what to expect. So for this particular playthrough, all I did is create a new character, because all of my saves were deleted. And then I speed run up to this point, so I'm pretty underpowered. Uh, so I'm playing on easy, so it doesn't actually matter. I'll take care of the big one. You worry about the rest. take these two out, but I will. Yeah, I'm definitely under level for this. Get out of here. Kaine, sorry to keep you. Why are these people saying such horrible things about you? Whatever. It's all true anyway. What is that thing it's holding? It appears to be spewing them from within. Well, whatever it is, we need to take it out first. We now know, according to the end of the game, that they are babies. already. Kaine, I'll drive him to you. Get up there and wait for him. All right, watch yourself. So I found out on the last playthrough, the last speedrun that I did, that I definitely have to take all of these things out. Can't just skip through them. Don't let it get away. I won't. As soon Kaine and I will have it surrounded. 
So just so I don't accidentally screw something up and get Emil's shop theme again, I've switched back to the standard soundtrack. I've also got no idea how long this is going to go on for, so if it goes on for more than, say, three hours, I'll probably need to quit for tonight and then splice some footage in afterwards. This ends now, asshole. We should join her. Right! Damn, this thing is just slamming non-stop. <laughs> so definitely need to watch this cutscene because I think it's very important for what's about to happen next. Stop talking now, and then I'm going to slowly walk over to you, cram my hand inside your goddamn bitch-ass chest, and pull out your fucking heart! <laughs> my grandmother would never say that. She'd never tell me to give up on life. Never! I spent my entire life searching for a way to avenge her death. She gave me the strength to deal with this goddamn mutant body. Do you know how long I've been like this? How much I loathe myself? Jesus. Should do it.
Here we go. Kaine. I think she intends to perish where she lies. And in truth, perhaps death is the greatest comfort we can offer her. That's not your decision. Hmm? You don't get to decide who lives and who dies. She's a life. She has meaning and worth. And we're going to save her. Everyone has something to live for. Even Kaine. Even Yona. Perhaps you should save your pretty words for her instead of wasting them on me. So at the moment she's dreaming of her grandmother and then the player character wakes her up. But apparently something different can happen now. I don't recall if that phoenix was ever there. It must have been, surely. If it wasn't there before, then that is incredible. Here we go. Grandma, can I rest now? I'm so tired. Kaine, over here! Don't give up! You're stronger than that! Don't you dare give up now! This woman is more trouble than she's worth. That's it. Come on! That's new. I think that cutscene in general was similar, but... The hand disappearing like that is new. I had tears in my eyes when I woke up this morning. I must have had a really bad, sad dream. Maybe I'll talk to Kaine about it the next time I see her. I assume that's Yona, but that's not a diary entry that I've seen before. That's often how I wake up too, just saying. Again. There's that dream again. Every time I wake up from it filled with pain and sadness. With this feeling like I've somehow forgotten something extremely important. When I look at my broken sword, it reminds me of my battle with the Shadow Lord. And this is after ending day. Somehow it's been three whole years since I saved Yona. Eight years after the time skip. That was supposed to be it. Goal achieved. Game over. So then, why was I crying? Is my PS5 on the fritz? Three years have passed. And I still haven't found the answer to that question. I actually thought there was a binary choice that you had when you approached Kaine there. But now we've just been thrown into a new rouse. Not exactly the restful sleep I was hoping for. Damn it. I guess I'll go kill some shit. Sounds like a plan. Ah, uh, what do we have? <laughs> Come on, game. We have a whirling something slash and a charging something slash. Please insert your own expletive there. Three medicinal herbs. 
We don't have Grimoire Vice. We do have Emil staff though. Do we remember Emil? Emil. <sighs> Alright. First things first. Alright, fuck off and die, you pervy little shit. Creepy bastard must have a death wish or something. Yeah, honestly, I think that's pretty deserved. Uh, you're not going to see what I did to get that. Go look it up yourself if you want. I'm not showing it off. I did have to go back into this room because I couldn't figure out how to do it until I read the guide. So that's why the cuts there are a little bit awkward. Oh, Yoko Taro, you are the worst. Although I really wonder what he's working on at the moment, because it's been a hot minute since he last released something. Alright, I think we're just murdering some dudes for now. Okay, that is our... what is that? That is our charging slash. Which honestly seems pretty effective. And we've also got the Whirling Slash, which is this thing. Oh, that's a lot of shades out there. So, after three years, they're still multiplying like rabbits. Like we're on a murder spree right now. Feels like there's a lot of shades around lately. Maybe I should check in on Yona's village. Okay, we have an objective, and the X has just appeared. Is she doing like a, a hard out watch anime? She totally is. She's doing a Naruto run or whatever it's called. Yeah, it's not going to work like that, buddy. Hey, get back! It's dangerous here. <laughs> I think that's my line, buddy. It absolutely is. Do we have the finisher attack? We do. So sort of like a heel stomp. been on the rise around here lately. Now go home. Oh, believe me, I want to. Thing is, I've got a job to take care of. See, we haven't been able to get in touch with anyone in the Forest of Myth. Mm. Somebody's got to go over there and make sure they're all right. And that someone is you. You will make it ten feet before some shade mauls your ass. I'll go. What? Really? Oh, man. Thanks a million. Oh, wait. You should take these. Medicinal herbs? Yes. I'll wait for you around here. And thanks again. Alright, the X has moved. Yeah, the short story or whatever it was that I read on the wiki basically said that Kaine went to the Forest of Myth, had a chat to the tree, things happened, and that was it. There's got to be more than that in this route, surely. 
Also, does Kaine have experience? But it just says level 48. I think that's where I was when I completed Ras D. So I quote me on that. I've got no way of confirming it anyways because I've lost my save game, so, you know. Do I have to warm up the old vocal cords? Hey, anybody home? No, but I do see a dead body or two over there, can't I? A new save file has been unlocked. Your save data up to this point will be temporarily unusable. Fair enough. Shit. If you die in the dream, you die in real life, right? <laughs> That's how this all works. Yep, there's a tree. Whoa. What are those things doing here? Wait, did they kill the villagers? They're not quite... No, they're like the robots in Junk Heap. Slightly advanced, but they're not out of awesome Arsa. Not just yes, anyway. They're behaving the same as the robots in a junk heap. Though they're clearly manufactured differently. These ones are created out of pipes and things rather than just metal blocks. Why would robots be coming out of a place like that? We're either going to get teleported into a text adventure or something magical is about to happen. We about to go somewhere that we may have seen about six years ago in real time. No, this is new. The hell's going on here? What's a place like this doing inside a tree? Speaking to the wrong girl. Creepy little freaks. Yeah, this is brand new content. Brand new zone, brand new area. The tree and all of these robot destroyed robots around the place. Artificial lighting. This is an integrated information management database designed to resemble a perennial plant. It transmits phenomena recorded in its memory unit. I don't understand a damn thing you're saying. Observations of you have been recorded as well. Your actions have caused the deaths of countless replicants. 
Show your damn faces already. That's clearly 9S and 2B. That's 9S, surely. I don't know if that's 2B or not. 2B's voice sounds slightly off, but that is 9S. Absolutely. This was a database designed to resemble a tree. We can't actually, no, there we go. are about to run into an alien mothership or something? Also, I take exception to the wording of you killed the original Gestalt. Well, that's not true. The original Gestalt gave up his life for me. There is a huge difference there. with this music. That is not... It's definitely not how I was expecting them to look. I assume that is 2B or 9S or earlier precursors of them. I don't know if that is the same, or it's intended to be the same boy that we saw in um, the, I'll call it the final Forest and Myth segment that you see in the second half of the game, where the boy is basically defeated, and then you see the boy in Hopler's office, or the trophy room rather. If it is, if it is uh, 9S and 2B, then they have no memory of this in Ultimasa, surely. Are we going to get a magical attack to finish? Again, that boss is behaving very similarly to the robots in the junk heap. The P-32s or 34s or whatever. Taken the liberty of sampling that strength. 
That seems like a... Are those things me? That seems like a very bad idea. If they turn on you, you're dead. It also seems like a very bad uh, thing for me. You want me to defeat six copies of myself? Maso. We've read about that. This was me at my strongest. That's pretty disappointing. These other me's are brittle as hell. Mm. I ought to be insulted. Absolutely. God damn, you're annoying. I want to tear these freaks apart, eat the pieces, and shit them into a trash can! Damn, can I? Ah, uh, can I knock them into... No. It's been a minute. Uh, Mew? You betcha! Anywho... It's good to see you safe! You didn't always have... four arms, did you? I see him as well. Um, who is that? What are those voices? Just a couple of little fucks. I do wonder if this was what they originally envisioned for the forest and myth in the original near design document, and they had to scale it back or something, or whether this is entirely original. Completely lost my train of thought there. Kine, I did it. How the hell did you come back from the dead? Or back from being just a head? Is that a doorway? Beyond 
found here lies that which was lost. I think I've seen that diary entry before. Sometimes I wonder if Kaine will worry if I send too many. I'd better write her and say I'm doing great. don't seem to be any bad guys around. Emil, I didn't get a chance to ask yet with all the fighting and shit, but what happened to you back then? And where have you been? And why the hell do you have four arms? K Kaine, I... Look, it's gonna take way too long to get into all that now. Fine. <sighs> I was worried, you know? Aw, Kaine. But look at us now. Team Camille, back together again. Oh, don't say yeah. that. I guess so. Team Camille. Uh, was this an automata right at the end? I don't remember if it was or not. If it was, I'm struggling to recall it. Now, this looks like it's maybe somewhere out of the world of the re recycled vessel, or my initial impression coming in here was that it might be part of the Lost Shrine. Like that might be the Lost Shrine in the center, and these might be the surrounding buildings. But it's not detailed enough to be that. Uh, Shadow Lord's Castle, perhaps? But yeah, definitely getting a copied city vibe out of this. Kine, I, I feel like I've forgotten something really important. Tell me about it. You too? Yeah. I can't really describe it, but it's like my mind is filled with this weird fog. I think I... made a promise to somebody? Like... that we would go eat something delicious? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well then, we'll just have to get those memories back. Yeah! We had that conversation when we went back to, um... Higher character's village after we got the final memory fragment. Key fragment. Whatever it's called. Damn, look at this place. If this is using the same geometry as Awesome Massa, I don't Feel recognize an enormous it. Magical power ahead. Just don't do anything rash. Got it? Got it. The same goes for you, Kaine. I don't want to be alone anymore. Yeah. Is this the Shadow Lord's castle? Mm hmm. Kaine. I'm sensing some powerful magic up ahead. See so Yona's chamber at the back left. This is a very special place. To you and to the world. What is with the upside down buildings? And who dies. There he is. That voice. It's the one from my dreams. I've heard that voice before. These are your memories. I reckon if you repeat them, you'll be right. 
I mean, like a save game or something. I'm kind of with you on this, Kaino. Shit, shit purse. That's almost as good as shit hog. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Is it happening? Okay, we're not quite there yet, but the radar and the health bar and the general aesthetic. The hell is this? Sweet memories from deep within. Are we going to get some murder demo in glorious 1080p? Just in case you didn't understand it for the first couple of endings. Understand, I've understood about two or three things, but that's about it. We're foreigners to this world, but this place contains our memories. BP and Khalil. It's about to lure any of you fuckers into the lights. Ah, uh, what am I doing? Am I going after the boss or am I going after the little dudes? Professional shade killer. <laughs> so. 
So this is just a place we can relive the memories we made along the way. This is the deepest place in your memories. Memories you had sealed away. And this one is your worst memory. Hey, we killed that thing about uh, 45 minutes ago. Maybe not even that. I'll kill you as many times as it takes. You goddamn shit fucking despicable piece of garbage! Why did you in there when I first fought this bastard? Mm -hmm. Look, why can't I remember? If there's no escaping this nightmare, why did you pull me into the tree? What is the purpose of this? So I really miss Dark Blast. Just saying. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is some twisted shit right here, and you're gonna pay. All right, you're making me attack humans. Lose to you. Yeah, we're not hacking, but it's um, well, it's not even close because we don't have a twin stick shooter thing going on. How am I supposed to reach that? Fuck down here, you worthless, piss guzzling shit rag! I don't know how to reach that. Okay. Yeah, the background is certainly the airy. I've lost my attack functions. So I lost my health bar. Get out, half breed. You disgust me. You disgust us all. I've lost the ability to move like on a dime. You. I'm just wandering around drunkenly here. Just leave us in peace. I've got no health bar though, and I can't heal either, so this is all very, very Enough scripted. Already. I'm not surviving this. <laughs> when Kaine's eyes flutter open, she sees a dozen villagers quizzically staring back. After a moment, she realizes she's collapsed on the ground, where sharp stones dig in at her flesh, like Whatever. That's not important right now. She pulls herself to a knee before rising on unsteady feet and sparing a glance at her surroundings. The fuck? She musses. What happened? Wasn't I just fighting shades? Her mind races as her hand gropes unconsciously for the blade that has been her constant companion for so very long. Though she can't explain it, it's clear she has somehow been transported to an entirely new world. Well, not entirely new. She recognises the hawk-shaped weather vane twisting slowly in the wind above her, as well as the small, round homes with wisps of smoke drifting into the air. And of course, there are the villagers currently staring at her with a mixture of fear and disgust. Oh yes, 
They are a familiar sight indeed. She is in the airy. She is home. Is something the matter, girl? Kaine spins around at the voice and sees a woman ravaged by time. Her narrow hips barely seem strong enough to hold her body upright, while the shawl wrapped around her thin frame appears ready to fall apart at any moment. Grandma? Is that really you? Her grandmother's eyes grow almost comically wide before blinking several times in succession. What's wrong, you fool girl? Is your head lost in dreams? Dreams? Could this be a dream? But it feels so real. But she's dead. Grandma's dead. I watched that goddamn shade kill her. So if this isn't a dream, what the hell is she here? Unless those shades killed me too. That must be it. I'm dead. I'm dead. And this is Hev- Oh, stop with that nonsense already. Kaine flinches as her grandmother raises a hand in the air, expecting pain to come as correction for her foolishness. But instead of a blow, her grandmother simply places the hand upon her granddaughter's cheek. The warmth of it instantly spreads from her cheek to her face before filling her entire body with a kind of beautiful light. What's wrong, girl? Asks her grandmother. Are you upset? Do you want to go home? Kaine feels tears coming to her eyes and struggles to hold them back. Though she still has no idea what is happening, she knows one thing is certain. This is her grandmother. Sorry, Grandma. Not sure where my head was out there. Well, just make sure you keep it attached, her grandmother chuckles as she pulls her hand away. Maybe this is a dream. Or maybe I'm already dead. I don't know. But either way, I'm not alone. As long as Grandma is with me, that's enough. Didn't I just tell you to stop spacing out, girl? Her grandmother says with a cackle. Here now, hold this. She hands Kaine a large sack, filled to bursting with all manner of fruits and vegetables. Damn, Grandma, this is a lot. Well, it's important to treat yourself every now and again. Besides, these villagers may hate us, but the bastards are more than willing to take our money. We'll lend support as we can, even if they have to hold their noses while we do it. Her grandmother trails off as if trying to remember something, then slowly turns around. Well, what do you know? In all the excitement, I forgot to buy my medicine. A thin smile wavers on her face for a moment before vanishing into a lifetime's worth of crevices and wrinkles, causing Kaine to take a concerned step forward. No, Grandma, that's fine. You go home and rest. I'll get the medicine. Her grandmother hesitates, clearly trying to weigh her own need for rest against her granddaughter's odd behaviour of a moment before. Before she can start to argue, Kaine charges ahead, ignoring the small voice in her head that's telling her what a bad idea all of this is. Really, Grandma, it's fine. Go home. I've got this. She pulls her grandmother's ancient wallets from her fingers, an act that requires a surprising amount of strength. Besides, you know how stubborn I am. Once my mind is set, there's no changing it. <laughs> I wonder where you get that from. Seeing that further arguments will be useless, her grandmother slowly turns and begins the long journey home. Kaine watches the figure recede from her vision, waiting for what seems an eternity to ensure everything is alright. Once the frail shadow finally vanishes over the horizon, she turns on a heel and makes for the apothecary. Ho oh there, says the elderly apothecary as Kaine enters the store. Here for Kelly's medicine, are you? Though few villagers had ever bothered to learn her grandmother's name, she and the apothecary were old friends. Perhaps that was the reason he'd always showed her kindness when so many others did not. Uh, yeah. If it's not a bother. The shopkeeper immediately sets about his work, deftly pulling bottles and herbs from the shelves and mixing them with a practiced hand. Soon, a peculiar smell begins to drift through the store, one that immediately reminds Kaine of her childhood. There you are, says the apothecary, as he holds out a small cloth bag. Sorry for the wait. Oh, and say, 
That's a fine portrait you drew of your grandmother. Looks just like her, so it does. Honestly, I've never seen Callie so over the moon about anything. She brags about it every time she stops by. You saw that? Says Kaine, her eyes narrowing. Said portrait was something she had whipped up one day after getting her hands on some crayons, and to call it rough would be an act of purest generosity. The idea her grandmother was displaying it around town makes Kaine's stomach want to sink down to her feet before slinking off into a hole somewhere. You bet I saw it, the pleased apothecary says. She brought it all the way here just to show me. My, but it's been a long time since I've seen something so wonderful. Kaine's mind begins to whirl. The picture was shit. She was sure it was shit. And yet, the man's reaction displayed the exact opposite opinion. Is he just being nice to me? The apothecary, as if sensing her skepticism, doubles down. I could really tell you put your heart into it. It was simply wonderful. Um, thanks, offers Kaine, who just wants the entire conversation to be over. I'd like this entire sequence to be over. She briefly considers how she's going to make her grandmother cease her little travelling art show, but then realises that train has likely left the station. <laughs> Shaking her head to banish her increasingly shrill thoughts, she grips the mag of medicine tightly and turns to leave. But just as she reaches the door, she hears a loud th from somewhere back in the shop. We're not done. Kaine turns around to see the apothecary crouching on the floor. Uh, hey there. You okay? Wrong voice. When the man does not reply, Kaine moves towards him. She assumes he just slipped on something, or perhaps hit his head on one of the low-hanging shelves in the crowded shop. But the moment she draws close to him, she hears him begin to scream inside her mind. My leg! My leg! My leg! My leg! Oh god, where is my leg? Panicked, Kaine looks down and discovers that the man's leg is gone. Help me! Screams the voice in her head. Help me! I'm not screaming that because it is midnight where I am and I don't want to disturb the neighbours. As Kaine looks on in horror, the man's fingers begin to shimmer and vanish. He reaches out for her with his other hand, only to find that it, too, is no longer there. Soon his arms go. Then his legs. Then the side of his face warbles out of existence, causing a stray eyeball to roll out of its socket and onto the floor. Heel, says the voice, if it could even be called that anymore. I can't. A moment later, what remains of the pitiful shopkeeper collapses into a heap of ash, releasing a small puff into the suddenly silent air. You did this, Kaine. As Kaine stumbles back in horror, she hears a cacophony of terror rising up outside. Oh god, what's happening? My arms! Where are my arms? Why can't I see? Kaine bursts out of the store and finds herself in a nightmare. Home slough off the side of cliffs? Is slough a word? Let's we'll look that up later. Taking out pieces of scaffolding as they fall, screams echo out everywhere, creating an opera fit for hell. Oh, I love that line. Villagers run in mad circles before exploding into dust, their clothing drifting this way and that as it floats untethered through the air. As she stares at the scene, wide-eyed, a single thought suddenly inserts itself into the forefront of her mind. I hit X and nothing happened. Grandma. Kaine breaks into a run, the crumbling world around her suddenly forgotten. She leaps from one piece of falling debris to the next, using them as stepping stones to cross a world that is increasingly losing cohesion. As she continues her mad dash, flecks of ash are blown into her face, her mouth, her eyes, ash, 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 buildings and people, all reduced to so many cinders in the wind. Soon, she arrives at her childhood home. It was once a place filled of precious memories, a place she regarded as an oasis in an increasingly mad world. But now, it is nothing but a pile of ash. 
As she gapes unbelievingly at the sight, a faint sound suddenly reaches her ears. She's alive! Grandma's alive! With a speed born out of panic, she leaps into the giant pile and begins shoving it aside. It stings her eyes and burns her lungs, but she continues on, heedless of the danger. Finally, she pulls a small, blackened form out of the darkness. Come on, Grandma, she whispers. We're getting out of here. Without waiting for a response, Kaine gathers her grandmother in her arms and breaks into a mad run, hoping to escape the chaos. But the wave of ash has become a tsunami, and before she can make it more than a few desperate steps, it reaches out with a cruel hand and overwhelms them. Kaine stumbles and falls, sending her and her grandmother tumbling into the ashes. One glance at her feet is enough to reveal the culprit. Her right leg has vanished at a point just below the knee. Oh, it'll take more than that to stop me, mutters Kaine as she slings her grandmother over her shoulder and begins to crawl away. We're going to make it. We're going to live. As she crawls, her grandmother seems to grow lighter, as if trying to magically reduce the weight of her own burden. And as Kaine continues to struggle, she hears a small, soft voice enter her ear. Thank you, Kaine. Thank you. As the voice drifted away, the last of the pile of ash that used to be her grandmother drifts away on a soft breeze. Kaine screams, an impossibly sad and lonely sound, and begins trying to pull the ashes back to her. This can't be happening. It can't be happening. But the ashes are mingling with all the other detritus from the collapsed village, and soon she can no longer tell which particles belong to who. Come on, come on, come the fuck on already. As she continues her frantic digging, her hand suddenly closes around a piece of soft, ragged fabric. Her grandmother's shawl. I knew this place was a lie. I knew it, and I still couldn't do anything. I couldn't save anyone. I couldn't even escape. I just felt the peace in the place, and I accepted it. I wanted it. That's why there was nothing here. No reason to live. No goal. No anything. So this is why I'm... Okay. Suddenly, a new voice enters Kaine's world. I say, can you hear me? After a moment, the voice calls out again. Louder. Clearer. Now then. You wish to get him back, hmm? Him? replied Kaine. Who are you talking about? Ah, for the love of all the heavens, I always did know you were a handful. Thank you for narrating this for me, Grimoire Vice. I appreciate it. Though the voice immediately begins to grate on Kaine's nerves, there is something else as well. A kind of warmth. Almost a familiarity. Are you truly so daft that you have already forgotten one of your beloved travelling companions and friends? Says the voice, which caused something deep in Kaine's memories to surge forth. That's right. I have friends. And I was fighting to get one of them back. At this realisation, a blinding, radiant beam of light shoots out across the ash-covered world. Covering her eyes with one trembling hand, Kaine reaches for it. Do hurry back now, hussy. It's curious because I would have thought she would have recognized Grimoire Vice. That looks like a electronic dark lance. Nope, there he is. What is the matter? Do you still not remember? You have not time to become lost in your thoughts. Right. Okay. Let's get him back! Well, that was an ordeal. Reading is hard. Do I have dark blast and dark hand and all the rest of it? 
power of Grimoire Vice grants you the use of magic. Use my magic to topple the beast. I presume you know how to use magic, yes? Then give us a show, hussy. I don't need your help to take out this goddamn fuck waffle. Fuck <laughs> waffle. Jesus Christ. Where was that swearing in the freaking visual novel segment? There we go. We have a counter to that. Well done. Now club on the beast. Let's fuck it up good. Shit, this thing is tough. Let the next on slot be our last. That's a first. Fuck your face. It's the first time she said thanks. I don't even know where we are, so you know, it's fine. We do have something here a level one sword, 999 attack power. And left and right on the D pad do nothing, so we don't have any spears or two handed swords. Makes sense, I guess. Let not your resolution waver before mere illusions again, hussy. Don't worry. I'll do what needs to be done. Ah, uh, the lock-on makes this so much easier. down. Let us finish this. Was that him or was that Grimma Vice's voice? tells me what to do. I swore I would be a sword. I swore that I would be your sword. Do you hear me? So I am going to get you back, and I don't care what it takes. Who the fuck do you think you are to just up and disappear like that, huh? I'm the one who gets to decide what my life means to me. It's my life, and I'll do whatever I want with it. So quit wasting time like a brainless fuckwit and get your ass back here now!
It's a question when she said that, whether it's right now or immediately after what happened. But she doesn't remember or she didn't remember what happened immediately after ending D. Maybe a year or two later, perhaps. I think we do. We've come this far. What the hell? Uh, I need to look this up very quickly just to see that I'm not making a mistake here, but I didn't realize it would actually restore the save games. Give me a moment. So, someone on Reddit says, LMAO, I did this because I was curious. Don't. You get the ending credits just in black background in hyperspeed like the troll endings in Nier Automata. And that's it, back to main screen. You need to redo the entire section since the last save points in Forest Entrance. We will not be saying no here. We're going to say yes. Once your save data has been restored, this save data will be erased. So you can only choose this option once. Are you really sure? Are you really sure about this? What is the name of the person you cherish? I mean, technically it's random, but in my first playthrough, it was near. And technically it was also a speed run as well. That map just showed the forest and method, nothing more. You can actually see that I did 100% of the quests here. Damn, is that really it? Yes, I thought this would be longer. Please don't take that sentence out of context. I mean, I've only been streaming for about an hour and 20 minutes and there was a starting section and a couple of flubs in the visual novel that I had to delete. It was only about an hour. That's crazy. I still don't see the Gestalt records there. Select the file to restore the lost save data too. Really? The ending D. Okay. Does it say D on the side there? No, A and B. I leave the rest to you, Hussy. What the fuck? See the northern plains at the south end of that shot there. And here as well. Is that the village? Is that the forest myth? Is that... Hello. Our journey may have been meaningless. Our past may have been a mistake but we're not going back even if this world comes to an end because this this is the world with the people we cherish I was going to say, this is a naked body, but anyway. Credits. Damn, I was really expecting that to be longer. It's literally maybe... 
I mean, I read through that visual novel out loud. If you skip through that, it's maybe only 45 minutes. That's crazy. I mean, it's nice that you can get the save data from ending D back, but man. So really, the only thing I want to see now is um, Kira Buckland and Kyle McCarley's credits here. Because on all four of the previous routes, they're listed here, but they're listed as question mark, question mark, question mark. I can't imagine they're going to be listed here as 2B and 9S. Like maybe they'll be like system administrator or something. Damn, what a short scenario. I don't think there's any way of skipping this, and honestly, I don't want to skip it. That awesome ice tease at the end as well. And that really was a tease. You just had that one combat arena, and that was it. I wish we'd actually gone into the world of Automata somehow. And maybe we did, and maybe I just didn't recognize the copied city or the very end of Automata. If we did, then I didn't recognize it at all. Alright, Kira Buckland, who were you? I'm hoping it identifies her now. If it uses the same video file, however. Girl slash additional voices English. Additional voices. And Kyle is going to be clearly the boy slash additional voices English. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. So what do we make of all that? Were they just early versions of 2B and 9S? Created thousands of years before the events of Automata, or what? Also, if we brought back the original Gestalt, isn't that going to render the events of Automata potentially moot? I don't know. I'm not great at lore analysis, so you know what? I should probably just shut the hell up and let this music play.
It's in the main screen. And hopefully that'll pop that trophy there. Good luck decoding that. A passing greeting has been added to the options menu. And there's our shiny new platinum. Visit that woman's house to acquire a new weapon. I mean, we've got to take a brief look. Oh, they've changed that. That used to be a Lunateer, but now we can see Emil, the player character, and Kaine's weapons there. What is a passing greeting? All right. Is everybody here? Present and accounted for. You betcha. Sure. All right, then. <clears throat> Dear players, the game is over. And we have a special message for you. Thank, Thank you, you for, for playing. playing. <laughs> oh, for <laughs> sake. Uh, Yona, why aren't you in bed? Oh, hey. It's my big, big brother. I'm so sorry. I just didn't want to miss this. Try and take it easy on her, okay? Yeah. You wouldn't turn down a request from your adorable little sister, would ya? Popola, Devola, you're here too? <laughs> Looks like you're having yourself a grand old time, sunshine! Okay, who was that? Shut up, Tyrion. You'll just make things complicated. We haven't all the time in the world, hmm? Let us finish what we came here to do. So, it's really gonna be over, huh? Does that make anyone else feel sad? We have to say goodbye eventually. But hey, I'm sure we'll meet again. You really think so? I'm getting hungry over here. Want to hurry this up? All right. Once again, from the top. Dear players, the game is over, and we have a special message for you. Ready? Ready? One, two, two. Thank, thank you for, for playing. playing. Oh boy. Let me just take a very quick look at this weapon, and then I'll call it quits. There's something new here. The question is, can I upgrade it? And what are the materials required? The one-handed sword, Kaine's sword. It has 999, so hopefully we can't upgrade this thing. I think we can level it up. God damn it. Alright, you crazy asshole, what's the damage? <laughs> Welcome. What can I help you with? Okay, maybe. Come back. <laughs> what can I help you with? Come back. <laughs> What can I help? It does magic power. Oh, I think I'm gonna to, gonna to get to level four and then get trolled. What can I help you with? Please be like a rusty bucket or something, and please let me have a rusty bucket in my inventory. Come back. <laughs> what can I help you with? Please, game, please. We're good. Come. I don't what believe can I that. With? I had the one rusty clump that I fished out of the ocean. That gave me the upgrade that I needed. What can I help you with? Come. Right, and this will be where it ends. Vice, what do you have to say about this weapon? She fears. She fears the pain, the suffering, the sadness of losing those she cherishes. However faint, that feeling alone remains with her. She fights. Her swordsmanship is so violent, it wards off sorrow itself. Nothing can stop her vengeful blade from its grim work. 
not even the fountains of blood that cloud her vision. She dreams. The darkness sings to her of solitude and despair, but she resists, time and again, never breaking. She presses on. Even if the future that waits has no meaning, she presses on. Because this is the world with Nia. That is it for Rousey. That's all we've got. I've got to say I'm disappointed that it was so short, but it's interesting at least that they tried to tie some of it to Automata. What does it really mean though? Is this how they got Kaine's genetic, genetic data and inserted it into A2 or whatever? I don't know. I was hoping for more of a connection there, but anyway. That will do it. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll be back with something new very soon.